Hi, Anthony here with Computer Repair Club. Today we are going to have some fun. We're going to install Windows 2012 Server onto our server machine here in the IT lab. And I'm just going to record a video showing how it's done. To be honest, it's been a while since I've done it. So, uh, there's a couple things I might be confused on, but we'll figure it out. Um, a couple things I want to set up today is uh, I'm going to do terminal services. Uh, I want to do an exchange server, you know, a file server, maybe a print server, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'll have the server do. You know, user management, database, a domain server. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. And here's our computer that we're upgrading to Windows 2012 server. I have server loaded on this thumb drive. Um, the first step is plug it in, of course. We put you back on the monitor here. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on, and since it's a Dell computer, I press F12 so that I could choose to boot off the thumb drive. Until I hear some beeps, and then, uh, okay. USB device. You choose USB device to boot off it. Press any key to boot. We'll see how we go. Alright, now we're loading files. Yeah, I highly recommend using a, you know, building even a small lab, even if you have like maybe a couple extra computers. They're not too expensive nowadays. You go on Craigslist. Get a couple older computers for 100 bucks each, 150 bucks. Get Windows Server. They have an evaluation copy of Windows Server you can get online. You get a six-month evaluation loaded on one of the com loaded on one of your computers. I mean, the requirements aren't too high, so if you have like a couple gigs of RAM and a big enough hard drive, you'll be fine. And uh, then, of course, just uh, let me give you a view while we're waiting for this. I'll show you the lab if you haven't seen it yet. Got a Windows 7 laptop there. I got a Windows 8 way over there, sitting on the shelf. Let's see, we got the server icon loading. We got our server here. Uh, oh yeah, this is <laughs> the screen's on top of a network printer. We have our uh, wireless printer here. I have a. Uh, my workstation there. I have another tower here. This is a Windows 10 workstation. Another Windows 10 workstation and behind there I have a nice network switch. I got a router in my living room which I do all my routing from. And a wireless range expander up by the light. And that's that. Okay, back. Okay, good. We're now we're ready on this computer. Okay. Windows Server 2012. Revision 2. Okay, I'm just going to go over here and click Next. If the settings are correct, install now. Setup is starting. Um, if it's like any other Windows install, I'll be, uh, oh, here's a question. Operating system you want to install. Well, we're going to do server with a GUI graphical user interface, so that's what we want. So I choose that option. Click Next. Click Accept Next. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do a custom, because we want to clean out the hard drive. And as you can see, our hard drive has lots of partitions that we need to delete. Where is the drive 118? Okay, let's start deleting these bad boys. Clear out the partitions. I don't know why there's a drive 1 on there. I must, oh, I left the hard drive in there, didn't I? Okay, well, we're loading it on a... 
Shoot, I guess I'll load it on this one here. There's two hard drives in there. I'm going to load it on the bigger one. So I click on the drive I want to install it on. Click on that. I'm thinking, do I want... Yeah, I better just do it on drive zero because I don't want to confuse things right now. Click next. And there we go. Windows is now installing. Since it's off a thumb drive, it should be relatively quick. But I'm going to stop the recording until it's until the next window pops up. Okay, so the server's restarting and it's now booting. And we'll see where we're at now. I have a feeling it's going to come up with the final installation screen. But uh, let's see. Getting devices ready. Okay, so we got some time left. Okay, so this so far it's been pretty uneventful. It's actually seemed just like a Windows, a Windows like seven, eight, or Windows ten install. It's almost the same. That so that new Windows screen. That's the same as Windows eight and Windows 10. Um, so here we go. So the, we got to create a username. Um, actually the username is automatic. It's for the built-in administrator. So we'll just create a password for it. Click finish. Ah, I didn't like my password. Let's get a really difficult password in here. Let's try that one. So yeah, it's got to be difficult. It's got to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and uh, some sort of uh, special character, I'm assuming. Okay, let's see. Let's log in. Okay, user profile service. I remember that. You know, I haven't worked on a server in a while, but that's... Uh, where the user accounts are being loaded. Um, basically, any computer you log into the network with, log into the server, will have a user account. And uh, that user will be like whatever you call it, like Tom, Mary, Sally. Um, okay, question. Do you want this to, do you want to find PCs, devices, connect on this network? Uh, yes. This is a server so I would assume we'd want to do that automatically okay so there you go um, it'll bring you to this window here configure this local server um, this is where you're going to uh, add roles and features so this is going to be like I was saying let's see what we got here role based server selection Yeah, so we'll go through this uh, on, on another video. Um, but yeah, this is, reminds me of the Windows Server 2003 and 2008 um, uh, configuration window. It looks like it's been spiffied up for uh, with the modern look of Windows. So this is the new server, and that's how you install Server 2013. Anyways, that was Server 2013 install relatively simple, smooth, straightforward. The more complicated part is uh, that last window we saw, which is setting up the server roles, such as terminal services, exchange service, server, VPN, um, domain services, um, file management, file server, print server, all those things that a Windows server can be. I will make future videos of setting those other services up. Um, the, probably the first one I'll make will be setting up a domain server because that's the fun part. That's what you'll be dealing with a lot on a regular basis. Um, 
yeah, your workstations connect to the domain. They connect to the different features that the server has to offer. So you will want to uh, be able to do that. Um, and uh, we'll be doing network, you know, networking videos with uh, connecting connecting workstations to the server using domain services. Because once you get out in the field and start working in um, business offices and, and uh, corporations, you will find they all run off a server and they all connect to the domain. Now one thing to keep in mind about uh, connecting to the domain is this, the Windows computer um, workstation always has to be the professional version or the ultimate version in order to connect to the domain. If you get, What will happen is smaller offices, someone will have, a, have set them up with a server and, uh, and they just start, they, they don't want to deal with IT so next thing you know they start buying Windows Home Premium stations and they call you out there, you're just going to have to tell them they need to upgrade to professional. Well, it's just part of it. They can't do it with Home Premium. So, anyways, enough of this uh, video. And, uh, yeah, if you liked it, press like. If you like our channel, <laughs> subscribe. And uh, make sure you check out ComputerRepairClub.com, a place for all of us to get together and uh, talk to each other. It's a forum. We could all talk about computers and IT and networking and, you know, really get further ahead in our careers. Alright, thanks again for watching.